the Lord as we get into your word today and we study the uh, scriptures here. We pray that truth will resonate with our hearts and everyone who's watching today. Um, that your that your your family would be blessed through it, Lord, and uh, all the hands that give. And we pray this in Thy name of Jesus, Amen. Uh, so y'all may be seated. Go ahead and applaud the Lord, and we want to thank everybody for being here today. Um, we're going to be in Malachi chapter three, verse eleven. I'm going to read this, and we got a very very short video. Um, it's a minute and thirty seconds, and it's Robert Morris and. Um, so 3.11 in Malachi says, I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of your soil and the vine and your vine in the field shall not fail to bear, says the Lord of hosts. Now, I want you to just kind of make an asterisk in your Bible uh, there with that. And then I'm going to roll this video and after a minute, 30 seconds, I'm going to come back up here and we're going to finish this. So go ahead and let's roll that video real quick. And by the way, when they took some of it, and, and by the way, do you know where they were supposed to give it? Into the house of the Lord. It was consecrated for the house of the Lord. But when one of them kept it, Achan kept some of it, it was cursed. Listen so carefully to me. When you, when you bring it to the house of God, it's blessed, it's consecrated. When you keep it in your account, it's cursed. And, and please understand, I don't know why I hear the same testimonies from everyone. Everyone. Tithers, all tithers give me the same testimony. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. Would you agree if you're a tither? Would you agree with that? Okay. But all non-tithers give me the same testimony. We can't afford to tithe. There's a reason. You're under a curse. But please, please, please hear me. I, I, I'm going to make you a deal. All right? You tithe for the rest of this year to Gateway Church. And if you're not fully satisfied, I'll give you your money back. <laughs> I'll give you your money back. I promise you. The only reason, you got to hear me, you know me, the only reason I'm asking you to do this is for your good. I'm tired of hearing about families that are, that are losing jobs and losing income and, and, and losing family and losing kids and losing marriages because the devourer is devouring them. And he tells us very simply, if you'll bring the tithe to the storehouse, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. It's a, it's a pretty good deal for 10%. Amen. Give me a little more, Mike. All right, so what I'm going to do is, uh, first of all, if you would, uh, what I want everybody to do, we did this in the last service, just take your tithing envelope, and I want you to write one thing. It doesn't matter if you're giving money or not. I just want, to, want you to write one thing that you're thankful for, and you put it on your tithing envelope, and you drop it in the basket, and we'll talk about that, why I wanted you to do that uh, a little bit later in the message. But this is just something... Um, I think is a good way to get you started in it with a grateful attitude uh, this Thanksgiving. So, you know, I'm thankful for whatever. Just write that on there. You don't even have to put your name on it if you don't want. All right. So this is something new for me. So um, God really was speaking to me about this devour thing. And, um, and I, I want to explain this to you. And uh, I want you to... Um, I want you to get it. I want you to understand it in its fullness. So you just let's. We're going to do it kind of slow. It'll it'll take a little bit of a time, a little bit of time, but I think it'll benefit you. So there's two things. There's two things here. It's a two part question. How do I get God to be on my side? And the other question is is who is the devourer? So in our Bibles as Christians, the Bible only speaks of God or the devil. These are the two entities or the two spirits that are. Um, and, and his followers are in constant battle uh, with the evil one. And he's a devourer. So the first question I ask, how do I get God to bless my life? The way I get God to bless my life is to ask his son Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. That's where it starts. Amen? Would you agree? So we ask Jesus to be Lord of our life, and then we start following his commands and decrees. So the second question is, is who's the devourer? That he talks about here in Malachi. Well, if you read this in, in 3.11, I'm reading out of ESV. Let's read this again. It says, I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruits. Um, in King James Version, it'll say so that he will not destroy. He meaning the devil. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. 
Say it with me. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So the very definition of a devourer is someone who swallows or eats up greedily to waste or destroy. So the Bible calls the devourer, or they call Satan a devourer. He has many other names. But devour is very fitting because all he wants to do is take. He, and, and he will take anything that you'll give him. He'll take your marriage. He'll take your finances. He'll take your health. He'll take any relationship. He'll take everything that you'll give him. He'll take your sobriety. And he just keeps on taking and taking and devouring and devouring. You say, how do I get him to stop? He gives us the antidote right here. Let's read this. 3, 6, he says, For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. From the days of your father, you have turned aside from my statues and have not kept them. Return to me. So he's asking the whole nation of Israel, return to me. Or he's asking the church today, today if you're a born-again believer, you're grafted into the kingdom of Israel through, the, through Jesus Christ. He says, but how shall we return? Verse 8, will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, how have we robbed you? In your tithes and your contributions. You are cursed with a curse for you are robbing me, the whole nation. Bring the full tithe in the storehouse that there may be food in my house and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts, and I will not open up the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is, there is no more need. I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of your soil. Or if you're reading King James, it will say it won't cast its... It won't cast its fruit until it's time, basically, is what it's saying. And you go, well, what does that mean? That means, have you ever gone to an apple-picking orchard? If you go to an apple-picking orchard, you want to pick the apples that are on the tree. Church, say amen. amen. All right. So I'm, I don't like apple-picking, and I think it's for old people, but everybody says, you're old, you need to go. <laughs> so I go, and I'm a good little doobie, and I go sometimes. So I see all the apples, some are on the tree, some are on the ground, and you can eat all you can eat while you're there. Take advantage of that. So I eat the ones on the tree, and I look at the ones on the ground. Guess what happened to the ones that are on the ground? They look appealing to the eye, glory, but if you turn them over on the other side, they're rotten. That's what happens to people's relationships, people's finances, people's, you name it, the devourer continues to come over and over again. He comes to devour, he comes to spoil everything, he comes to turn everything rotten in your life. How do we hold him off? He says right here we need to return to the Lord through the tithes and the offerings. Let us pray here. Lord, today we want to keep the devourer away from our children. We want to keep the devourer away from our family. We want to keep the devourer away from our relationships. We want to keep the devourer away from our church. We want to keep the devourer away from our country. We want to keep the devourer away from all the people we know. And we pray today, Lord God, as we give and give to you, Lord God, we know that you're going to open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on us today. And we pray that you do this, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, your Son and our Savior, we pray. And his church said, Amen. Would you give the Lord a round of applause? Hallelujah. Amen. Well, thank you for telling me I look nice. Amen. Yeah, every once in a while I slip one on, got to tell you. Turn with me into Colossians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6, talking about Thanksgiving. Say Thanksgiving. It's coming, so make sure that you deal with it with a grateful attitude. Some of you guys got people that are coming to your house that you don't even like. Look at me for a second. Don't turn away. 
It's just a natural reaction that there'll be some people in the world that we don't get along with. Am I loud enough? Do I need to turn up? You guys are all looking at me like, what? Colossians chapter 4, verse 1. Masters, treat your bondservants just and fairly, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Now, this is right after he gives us rules for Christian living in chapter 3. So, there's a couple of lessons we're going to learn here today. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving at the end. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison. So this is the Apostle Paul writing from, uh, from Rome. This is his second mission. He's in prison, uh, and he's encouraging the church, and he's telling them how to do it. Verse 4 says that I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom towards outsiders, making the best use of of the time, let your speech also be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. I'm going to start in the middle of this little this little truth nugget to help us with uh, with being thankful, and I start out in verse two uh, or verse three rather uh, in the last service. So I'll do that here today. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word. So this will be an opportunity today. It starts right here, right now, that God's going to He's gonna give us an opportunity. He's going to open a door for us when we leave here to share this word with somebody else. Amen. We have to believe that. This word is not just for us, but it's for everybody else in the world, a world too. Amen. So here's what he says. He said that he would open a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. So when we're out there and we start talking to the people out in the highways and byways, you don't have to worry about what it is that you're going to say. God will give you the words to say to the people he puts in your path. Amen. Don't be afraid to back up. I don't know what I'm going to say. God will give you the words. You ever notice that um, when, when the Holy Spirit's on you, you, um, you, you, you almost kind of start like talking almost like in tongues, but then you just keep going on and on. And then when you leave from there, you're like, you know what? I can't believe I said all that. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Raise your hand if that's ever happened to you. You go, I mean, I can't believe I gave him all that advice. And then like, so hold on for a second. Um, and, and you're almost like, you know what? In your heart, you're like, yeah, that was good. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. He's going to give you the words to say and the words to share with other people out there today. Amen? So let's, let's look at this. So there's two main points in here. Let's go back up to uh, verse uh, 2, 4 2. He says, Continue steadfastly in prayer. This is, this is the big one, one of the big ones. That means make sure that you're maintaining a prayer life. Being watchful in it with thanksgiving. So he's telling us today, so I attribute everything to food for the most part because it's a, it's a, it's a constant thing that's on my mind. I love food. So I'll, I'll just kind of give you a word picture here about this thanksgiving thing. So when you're concocting or putting together your prayer life, make sure the batter that you're mixing up is full of thanksgiving. Just say amen. Just act like you're awake and you go, okay, you're going, what's he talking about batter? Let me, tell, let me, let me bring it to you so you guys understand like, like I would. You want Thanksgiving in your batter. It needs to be the main ingredient. Did any of you guys as a child lick the beater? Oh, just say amen. They can't hear you on live stream. Just go amen. It, did your mom take it off the mixer before she let you lick? And I'm, I'm just joking. Be, your kids are going, what's a beater, Mom? A beater is the two metal devices that, that mix the batter. And here's the deal. I couldn't wait for, to hear the sound 
of that that old mixer. Remember, it was yellow and had an old stiff cord that went there, and it, and she and she bounced it off the top. It was it always had to be made in Tupper uh, Tupperware. Do they still make Tupperware anymore? But when she got done with it, I would hear it stop, and I would wait for her thumb to push that orange button on there so the, so the beaters would fall out, and she would bring me one. And, buddy, I could lick that joker so clean you wouldn't even have to wash it. Just put it right back in the drawer. It's so clean. Don't act like that ain't funny. This is how God wants you to mix your prayer life up. And just like give a real soft. That was, okay, there you go. Um, so in this you're going, so you're telling me I can't complain when I come into the throne room. I'm not telling you that. I think complaining sometime is a little cleansing, but it doesn't need to be chronic. Amen? Look at me for a second. You're going to get that this Thursday when they come over to your house. Thanksgiving's Thursday. They're going to be complaining when they come. There's always one chronic complainer at the Oh, is it Friday? Why can't we have a traditional like that? No. When are we gonna eat? And it's always the person, watch this church, that doesn't bring anything. Just say amen. I've seen some of you guys throw your hands up. It's always the one that doesn't bring anything. So what God wants you to do, it's okay to complain every once in a while, but not all the time. Ask God to give you a grateful and thankful heart. Amen? That's why I asked you. Finally woke up. I was like, my gosh, are they going to get it? I was about ready to do a handstand in here. Please don't. So here's the deal. So, so back to this Thanksgiving. So the reason, watch this. This will help you out. The reason I asked you to write one thing down on your tithing envelope, regardless if you put any money in or not, is if you can start by being grateful for one thing, it's easy to be thankful for the next thing. Now let me say it again. If I start by being thankful for one thing, it's easy to be thankful for the second thing. Amen. And if some, and here's the thing, I just got to say, I said this in the last service so I can say it here. Because you guys are, you guys are a little better than the last service, I got to be honest. But I just can not Here, listen. Attention, kids. The complainers that come to your Thanksgiving Day dinner, and they're going to be there. I, I got to ask you just to make sure that the, um, we're on the same page. Don't you feel like when they're complaining, do you really feel like just telling them, like, just shut up? Do you feel like that sometimes? That's just because you got a grateful heart and you want them to feel the same way you do. Amen? So instead of complaining, just think about one thing that you're grateful for. Amen? All right, let's slide down. So it says, at the same time, verse 3, at the same time, pray also for, uh, for us that God may open a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear, which is how I ought to speak. Verse 5, here it is. We're getting ready for the big finish. Walk, so we're getting ready for Thanksgiving. Walk in wisdom towards outsiders, making the best use of the time. That means make sure that you're working for the Lord. We don't have to have a, a, a full life of sitting on the backside of our anatomy. Can I get a witness? Amen. So make sure, make sure that we're working for the Lord. 
And then the last part is, is in verse 6. And I want you to, I want you to rise with me uh, real quick here. And I'm going to ask that we're, we're way ahead of schedule. I want to ask the deacons and the pastors and the praise team and everybody to come down just and just kind of hold the phone here. So there's three things I'm going to be talking about salt here. It says, let your speech always be gracious. And sometimes in the holiday season and Thanksgiving and Christmas and, and, and the New Year's is coming, we're in that season right now, and there's a lot of things going on. You go, how am I ever going to do this? And how am I ever going to get all these presents? How am I going to get the turn? Here's the deal. Let me tell you something about presents. Can I give you a tip on presents? If you don't have a lot of money, don't buy anything. Let me say it again. If you don't have a lot of money, don't buy anything. Because you probably don't want to buy anything for the people anyways. But if you do have a little bit of money, go to the dollar store and you'll look like the king, king of Christmas. Amen. Well, I got a solution for everything. Doug. Because here's the deal. Little Johnny's going to complain no matter what you get him anyways. You know that one of the family members where little Johnny is? He's going to complain. Get him a plastic comb for a dollar. He's going to complain anyways. You might as well give him something to complain about. So back to the salt thing. It says, let your speech, you guys can be playing back there a little bit. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Let me tell you three things that salt does. Salt preserves, salt purifies, and salt enhances things. So it purifies things, and this is, this is the way we look at sanctification. Sanctification is a process, and, that, and that's what salt does. It purifies things just like sanctification. And you have to remember that sanctification is a process. We talk about this every week, and it's a process that's ongoing. Day after day, year after year, week after week, month after month, it's something that goes on continually. And then it preserves. You guys are going to be the ones that are going to preserve the Word of God. If you're salty or you're called salt of the earth, that's because God wants you to preserve His Word. So I preach the Word to you. You get the Word, and you grab a hold of it, and you keep it for generations and generations to come. Hand it down to your children and then your children's children so they got it. Can I get a witness? It has to be preserved. You go and, and turn me up just a little bit. I want to make sure everybody hears this. You say, well, what happens, Pastor, if I don't preserve the word? And, and here at Westport, we got some handouts that I handed out to everybody. And it's, a, and it's, a, it's an information about a, a pro-life organization that we support. It's called Thrive. And, and it's designed to save babies. Simple. Designed to save babies. Well, they, the God has blessed this organization to be in our public schools teaching about abstinence. And they said, you, you want to make sure that you don't get STDs and you don't, you know, these kind of things. Abstinence is the best way. Well, there's an opponent that's out there. They have a, they have a, a, a counter to this message. So there's, there's a real battle in, in this and we need to support these pro-life organizations. And, and if you can't be there, or I want you to be in prayer. So we have to preserve the Word of God. Because if you don't show up in these arenas, the devil will show up. And I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm getting tired of watching Christians sit on their hands and letting the devil take up ground every place. And, and trying to take the Bibles out of schools and, and taking prayer out of the public places and, and getting God off of all our monuments and off our money and all this kind of stuff. Who, who fell asleep here? It's time that we start getting the ground back that we gave up. And you need to let the devil and everybody else know, I'm not giving up any more ground. We're going to preserve the Word of God, and we're going to pass it on. And I'm going to tell my kids and my grandkids, don't you let the devil take that. Don't you let the devil take that. He'll come right in your house and steal whatever you've, you've given to your children if you don't watch it. And 
tell you how to run your household and tell you how to run your church. Last time I checked, this is a free country. Now let me say it over here. I said, last time I checked, ma'am, this is a free country. And we can preach what we want. And we believe right here in America that Jesus Christ is Lord here. Can I get a witness in the church? you got to preserve the word. You better back up. We got to preserve the word. We got to support this kind of stuff. And then the last thing is uh, salt enhances the flavor of the word. Each one of you guys got a, a, some kind of a testimony or a ministry, whether it's music or preaching or children's ministry or whatever. And you get that word of God in your heart, and you, and then when you d- deliver it, you you put the zeal and the zest on it. So what this looks like is is when you go to bed at night, when you go to bed at night, you got, it's you and God. And and I don't know about you, but man, like when me and my wife go to bed or I'm praying with me and my wife and sis and we're going, you know what, man, I gave everything I got. I got, I gave, I I brought it to them. Or like when you're, or, or like when your kids leave after Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever, or New Year's coming up. I gave them everything I had, God. It, when I'm on my knees at night, I go, man, I gave them everything I had. And I, and I was praying for them, God, and I was praying for the kids, and I, and I was praying for the opening, and I, was, and I was praying that I was salty, and I was, and I was zesty, and I didn't back off, and I, and I was bold, and I wasn't a little baby Christian. Church, I want to talk to somebody that's on fire for the Lord today. There's a changing of the guard in Jesus is Lord. So let me ask you this question here today. This Thanksgiving. This this Thanksgiving thing. Huh? There's people here, you know, if you read back in history, you know, in this first Thanksgiving Day celebration back in Massachusetts in 1621 where these brothers and sisters got together. I, I've read the story over and over again, and they said, you know what, after this kind of harvest, Tommy, we just need to thank God that we're here. It was cold. There was people that died. There was disease that afflicted. They had fights. They, had, they fought. People fight, but that doesn't mean we have to stay like that. We just Can't we all just like get together at the table and thank God for what he's done? I mean, if you look around or just look in the mirror, you, you know that you got to be a miracle. Let me ask you this question today. Close your eyes when I ask this. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior today? If you were to die today, do you know where you'd go? I'm going to ask you this question. Would you like to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior today? Just say, that's me, Pastor. I need to give my life to Jesus. I I I want Jesus to be my Lord today. Just pray like this. Just say, God, my life up to this point, God, has been unmanageable. I want you to take it, and I want you to do something with it. I want to become a a born-again believer. That's salty for you, Lord God. I want to take this message and and share it with a lost and dark and dying world. And for all the saints that are in the house of the Lord together, whether you're here, you're at North, or you're on live stream, wherever you are, all over the country, all over the world today, just rededicate your life to Jesus today and say, God, I want to be salty for you. I want to be on fire for you. I want to be used by you today, Lord God. In this Thanksgiving, I want to be more thankful than i ever been. That's me. That's me, God. And I pray today, Father God, In the mighty name of your Son, Jesus, our Christ, our Lord. And this church together said amen.